All right. It may look like the stream's being a little bit laggy, but that was actually just laggy on my screen as well. So let's. Um, I'm just going to dive straight in. I mean, I I spent the morning reading the manual, so I have a vague idea of what's going on. That looks a bit smoother. So there's the different factions you can play. So you've got Great Britain, which includes Ireland in its entirety. You have. It's not let me slide around. Okay. Ah, there we go. You got Spain and Portugal, Morocco. You got the north. Okay, so you got the whole northern tip of Africa. You've got the whole of the Ottoman Empire, not the uh, Napoleon Total War. Let's have the slither up the top here. Uh, Persia on the east. Russia is an absolute giant as usual. Sweden, Denmark, which includes Iceland. And then these are the minor factions, all these tiny little things in here. So you've got the Netherlands, Prussia owns a little bit in here. France owns some around here, so that's a nice fighting point for them to start with. Oldenburg, Mecklenburg, Hessen, Saxony, Bavaria, yeah, and all the rest. So I think what I will start with is not France or Britain, because they're both major powers and will be expected to do something useful. Uh, not Sweden, because you'll see Diplex play that. Russia I'm going to save for a single player campaign. I think when it's that size, it would just be rude not to. Um, I might go for Spain. They've got some very early, obvious targets. Portugal, Morocco. Whilst hopefully being able to stay on the side of France and maybe just dodge Britain for a bit. So, Spain. Difficulty. Got your difficulty slider. Yeah, we're a member of the French coalition at the moment. So uh, Johnny Maverick is living in one of these territories somewhere. If he helpfully tells us in chat, I'll make sure it gets stomped on royally as fast as possible. So let's give this a go. Okay, welcome to March of the Eagles. Blah blah blah, question marks, yeah, okay. So we're paused. So as you can see, to start with, it looks very much like uh, Crusader Kings. You've got your various armies scattered around, no leaders currently in them, but they're broken down into flanks. So left flank, centre flank, right flank, and then you have your reserves, which are normally led by your overall general. Go to the detailed view. If he had more troops, I mean, he's only got these two, you would see which were in each of the flanks. Along the top here, you've then got all the different strategies that they can use. So, regular strategies, just fighting regularly, if that's ever a strategy. So, delaying, uh, deliberate assaults, holding, entrenched defence, fainting, refuse. So, you um, try and pull some of your units out to go elsewhere whilst they screen it and uh, up the guard. As amusing as it sounds as sending in your guard troops to try and charge their defences down, I believe. So, let's see what have we got. A call to arms has been issued by France. They want us to come to their aid in the conflict against Great Britain. Now, if I don't do that, I get thrown out of the coalition. I'm not really too sure I want to deal with Great Britain, but what is that? Ah, of course, Britain has Gibraltar. Okay, let's accept that. And we will try and get some forces to deal with Gibraltar, I think. So, what have we got? Got a navy up here. First rate, first rate. Another first rate, so and there's a second rate, so that's a combat fleet. Right. We have 37 unemployed leaders. Apparently they're all in the dull queue. Uh, countries at war with Great Britain. So diplomacy-wise, let's have a look. So enemies are currently only Great Britain. Military, we've got 
loads of fine ideas. So this is what replaces the um, research sort of thing. I mean, Crusader Kings spanned hundreds of years, so you'd all you definitely have you know technological innovation going on. This spans just the Napoleonic Wars. I think it's 20 years maybe maximum. Um, so there's not a lot to go on in terms of research. So they've gone for this idea system instead. So um, shock ideas gives you bonuses to assault column, mixed order units. You know, it's basic things. And you gain idea points through fighting. And you actually gain more through losing. So if you lose battles, you you know you learn from the mistakes and you hopefully come back stronger. Uh, yes, there is a multiplayer option in this. Um, it's up to 32 players, which seems very odd. You would almost definitely want to have eight players, one as each of the major nations. How you're then going to convince anybody to play as the minor nations, which are then really likely to get stomped. I mean, look at the French armies to start. The Netherlands have... let's see, what's that? 18, 25,000 troops maximum. Parked on their border, they have uh, 23,000, 28,000, 19,000, 18,000, 14,000. You know, and that's just in northern France. You look elsewhere, they've got uh, down here a 65,000 army. Playing as a minor nation, you are going to get slaughtered. But, uh, uh, the manual has a very good way of describing this. If you're playing as one of the eight major nations, your objective is to win. If you're playing as any of the minor nations, your objective is to be on the team of the side that does win. That, that is the, your sole objective, survive, basically. So if we go to overview, these are the provinces that... sort of their key target provinces. The more of these we have, the closer we are to winning. And the current owner is shown on the side here. So these are sort of like victory conditions, if you like. So we need to try and get some of these. So Gibraltar's on there for Britain. So we need to try and get that off of them. What else have we got? Portugal's got a couple. So there'll be a, an obvious enemy. Algeria. So that's what you're aiming for, mostly. One very interesting thing, whilst we're just talking in general, that I came across in the rules earlier, or not the rules, sorry, the manual, is that you can have multiple people control the same nation. So, as a running example, you could have me and Chadman both play as Great Britain, and you both get complete control of everything. So he could make, you know, a move, I could then highlight it and move it back. So you have to coordinate with the person you're playing with, but it does mean you can do all sorts of things, like you could have multiple players of France, one focusing on this northern region, one focusing down here, or... You you know, one guy could focus on the economy and providing the armies while the other does the fighting. So, uh, there's all sorts of things you can do. Especially if you... I believe for the previews, what they did was they assigned all of the review websites a pair of people to each faction. So you, you had a pair of people playing the Ottomans, a pair of people playing Russia. Um, and then one person kind of played and the other ran around trying to do diplomacy, you know we won't attack you if you don't attack us and then halfway through they go well screw that we're attacking you um, there's a full chat system built in where you can type to specific people so only they see it you can set up channels called like invade France and then invite various people to that channel so only they see it there's all sorts of things in there for being nasty it does seem to be a lot more multiplayer focused and it's supposed to be a lot quicker due to the reduced time frame um, so you can get it out of the way in you know, a, a an evening or two, I think, is what they were quoted as saying. But anyway, let's start grouping up, shall we? Because I want to go say hi to Gibraltar. So what's that? That is 31,000 troops plus the four already down there. I don't really know what the other nations are going to get up to. Portugal may well dive into this war yet, so we'll unpause and see what pops up. So if we click on the, um, the actual territory, you get all its details. So supply limit is how many people that can support in that territory. 
So if we click on Cadiz, it's got a supply of 159k. So that's the maximum weight that it can support. And if you click on these units, it should tell you their weight somewhere. Um, I'm not quite sure where that is yet. As I said, I'm learning as we go. So you'll have to bear with me. I have a basic idea of the concepts, but uh, finding it is another matter. It may just be the complete unit. Sort of number counts as their weight. So, you know, there's 4.2 thousand, so that's their weight. So what we've got up here, war exhaustion. So if you fight for too long, I believe you get war exhaustion. Um, how many diplomats? You can only maximum store five diplomats and they recharge over time. So having five, I should probably use one for something. But I'm not really sure what. Let's see, what can we do? Where did that army go? Oh, hello. He's marching to come get me. Actually, we'll keep you in port. So we may get engaged here. This could be bad. What have we got here? Line infantry and militia. Now, we actually do have things up here. Um, what's this? One of these should say Force March, but I don't know if I have it unlocked. Yeah, there's Force March, but I don't have the idea yet, so I can't do it. They would have marched faster if I had Force March unlocked. Spanish holdings in America. Okay, beginning with the arrival of Crystal Columbus, colonial expansion in America under the Crown Castile was motivated by trade, spread of Christian faith. Wealth and trade goods brought to Spain by the colonization of America have made the country wealthier than ever. So I get a bonus to national tax modifier. Great Britain formed a coalition against France. Okay. Um, you going to tell me who's in their coalition? Diplomacy, I guess. Doesn't really say. Okay, apparently Johnny lives in Lisboa, which is over here, so we're going to have to go get that later. Actually, Cadiz has a fort. Now, one of these is retreat to fort. If there is a local fortress, you can order your stack to take shelter in it. It won't be attacked unless the enemy lays siege and launches an assault. Get out of the way. So hopefully they all go sit in the fort. Yeah. So they're now sitting in the Cadiz fort whilst these guys sit outside. People are asking me to speed up. I'm still trying to work out how to play the game. I've literally just installed it. I'm not going to go speeding it up until I've worked out what the hell's going on, I'm afraid. So looking at budget, we're getting a bonus to cats, which is the currency. So that's this one up here. What else we got? Victory conditions, we've already looked at that one. What are Britain up to? Just checking they're not dropping forces anywhere else on me. Don't appear to be. Okay, we will bump that up one.
I can probably get away with speed 3, uh, speed 2. Probably equivalent to what I used to play on, on Crusader Kings. Okay, so our armies are showing up. We can probably go force that army to battle. Actually, what I may do, let's send you straight in there. Okay, who is our best general? What's that? Sort by overall expertise. Let's put him in as the main general. So what have we got? I'm guessing they're just line infantry brigade, infantry brigade. Really? No, get to the right flank. I want at least an infantry brigade supporting the cavalry and the cannon. Who just has cavalry and cannon on their own? Okay, there we go. So let's group these a lot and get our second best. Okay, so what we got here then? Militia, infantry, infantry. Let's put the infantry there on that flank. Dragoons. Cavalry. Let's put the Dragoons in the center. And start assigning out some commanders. So you can see we've got the different options now. So Counterpunch. When the enemy launches an attack, the opening created in the enemy's guard is exploited and your troops attack, leading to a better defensive and offensive outcome for you. So you've got quite a few choices. Delay. But anyway. Ports are blockaded. So the Mediterranean fleet under Lord Horatio Nelson is currently uh, blockading my army in. Now, can we recruit in here? Let's see. Start construction. Recruit a brigade. Ooh, horse artillery. We go. Light infantry. Let's get some of those out because we haven't seen any of those in any of my armies yet. Okay, so the defender has. 4,000 troops in there. A crap load more artillery than I do. It's your fortress. You know, I'm not really sure how this would go if I did try to assault this. Let's give him some generals. Okay. Where does it tell me how long the siege is going to last? When the morale of the defenders hits zero. Okay. Let's 
Here comes Nelson. Oh, oh, I see what he's up to. You die for that port. I'm onto you. Right, so, how's the siege going? I don't know. Doesn't really tell me. Great. Okay, Brunswick have honoured their military alliance with Great Britain and joined the war. Damn you, Brunswick. Let's bring this army down as well. We can completely crush them. I will be happier. Can you cross? No, you can't cross the Straits of Gibraltar without ships. Fair enough. So let's have a look what's France up to, shall we? Looks like Britain and France are having a naval battle. Can we click it? No, we can't get any details of that. We just have to watch. Oh, Britain just got reinforced by the look of it. So they're just bleeding people. How's this siege doing? Any budge? Nope. No sign of movement. So, as usual for uh, games like this, it doesn't tell you a lot. So this frontage thing you're seeing me hovering over here. Basically, if you're in bad terrain, you know, like mountainous terrain, you can't deploy massive lines of troops because you've only got so much space. So... Um, Usually an army would have a specific frontage, you know, an amount of space it occupies, you know, it'd be this wide. If the territory you're fighting in doesn't allow you to be that wide, that's a whole load of troops that are standing behind other troops that can't do anything. So that's what it's on about when it's talking about frontage. Okay, so we could assault the fortress. The assault would probably fail and your troops would take heavy casualties. Well, that tells me all I need to know. Let's speed this up again, get this army down here. What's their makeup? Ooh, lots of nice cavalry, cannon, light infantry. So we're just bringing these down and we're going to do an assault across into. Actually, I'm not going to go across into Cadiz from there because we can see there's a nice little river there. And we know what this game is uh, like when there's rivers involved. Crusader Kings is anything to go by, you get absolutely butchered. Okay, let's merge these armies. So, do we have the best guy leading? Yes. Let's have a look at their construction or makeup. Now, I'm not sure I want that much cannon in one. All that much cavalry. 
Okay, you go to the left. You go to the scent. Or you. Militia. Let's get the militia out. Infantry. Militia. Let's get all the militia out of the way first. And let's see what we're left with. So we've got a line in there, a line in there, and no sign of a line in here at all. So we'll put you on the right flank. Put another unit of cavalry on the left, so there's a pair in each, with the cannons on the left as well. And then stock up a couple of militias in the middle. That'll do nicely. Okay, let's... Um, Give them their orders. So you've got deliberate assault. Do a deliberate assault on the left flank and the right flank. And the center can counter punch? What's that do? Lots of cavalry bonus. They got two units, so. There we go. We'll give that a try. Go on then, go fight them. Oh, they're running for it. Will they get away? Here comes the friendly troops. Oh, they've got away. So now we're going to have to chase them. Send them in there to recapture that. We'll have a wait for them to move out. Nope, there we go. They're attacking the light infantry brigade I just constructed. So that brigade that I told to build has magically just built itself into a unit of, uh, well, an army that nearly doubles its number. That's unfortunate. So we can see their forces, mostly infantry. They haven't really got any cavalry at all. They've got no guards. So these two should blast away at each other. We won. Nothing special happened in this battle. Apparently Sir Hugh Dalyrimple is terrible. So you can see here uh, we got some idea points for that. There's the casualties. So we did take some heavy casualties there. As you can see they lost 362 and we lost 1400. So they're retreating this way, straight into my next army. There we go. So we've got another battle here. Hopefully this time my reinforcements can get here first. Uh, things are not going well. Oh, maybe they are. That one didn't go so badly. Where's he going? Cadiz. Alright, you two merge. Chase him. It seems these battles end a lot quicker than the nearby armies can get to them. Ah, here we go. We've got a proper battle now. So they've got no bonus on two of their flanks because they don't have any generals in them. You've got Gustav von der Dachen in the middle. And uh, I don't think it's going to go very well for them. 
He's got 2,000 men, we've got 11,000, 2,000, 6,000. So these two are now in the pursue phase, which probably means that he's broken and my horses are now chasing after him. They're in the combat phase. The combat phase is when the infantry fight each other. You've got the, the bombard phase where the cannons blast the crap out of each other. The combat phase where the infantry have a go at each other. And then the pursue phase where the cavalry go charging after them. So there we go. So we lost 99, they lost 5,765. So here we go. The Spanish cavalry rode knee, rode knee the knee. Um, I think they got a typo in there. In perfect formation. First at the walk, then at the trot. They got closer and moved to the centre. Don Francisco Abadia. My, the discipline of the horsemen was showing. Temptation to charge too early was strong, but the cavalry had the line. Bugle sounded. And the centre flank's cavalry charge struck home. So there we go. Spanish cavalry were ordered forward to exploit these by launching a raid on the right flank. So after chasing off the middle flank, they came round and absolutely decimated the right flank instead. So we got no idea points and they got nine because they got butchered. Okay, where are those heading now? They're heading this way. Again, let's merge forces. Oh, no, where's he off to? He's off that. No, he is fighting here. Okay, so this time we really, really outnumber them. So they should be the end of that army. Now we're cutting them down. Didn't quite get there. So we lost nothing and they lost 1,842. That seems a little unlikely. Okay, Russia have honoured their military alliance with Great Britain. They are now at war with France. And me. Lovely. You pause. Okay, so what have we got down here? Another victory. Spanish cavalry. Got cavalry charge off. And he's gained the trait Fast Marcher. Right now, what I was looking for was... Let's send our navy out. These are... First rates. Second rates in a frigate. Go jump that British fleet there, please. You come join your friends in the attack on Gibraltar. Oh, they're going at it again. As you can see, we're already triple flanking on this uh, one poor side. Impetuous Commander. Skirmisher 1. An Impetuous Commander. Okay, so now we have quite a lot of cannon brought to bear. The attrition level of their fort is 8%. We're at 0. So now their morale should start going down. Is that another victory? Oh no. Sir Hugh Dalyrimple cried when his whole army cowardly deserted. So we've completely destroyed this poor guy's army now.
so so far very much like Crusader Kings um, still trying to get to grips with exactly what's going on all the time it's uh, the usual forte of let's chase armies around until we manage to pin them down and finally finish them off sieging seems a little more involved you've actually got cannons that can bring down the wall and make a breach so it's easier to you know actually assault You've got a lot more control over your specific army configurations, which is always nice. That's something I disliked about Crusader Kings, is it was just kind of bunch up and blob in. So we'll do a bit more on this, um, just to see what happens, you know, after I conquer this and whether I can end the war and claim the territory and all that sort of stuff. It's j this is just going to be an initial impressions night. Um, you know, I'm going to do a lot more playing off of camera to work out what the hell's going on, hopefully in advance of the uh, the cooperative campaign. So we shall wait and see. Right, looks like our navy has just caught these guys, so they have a frigate squadron. Whereas we have ships of the line squadrons and a frigate squadron I'm not sure what the percentage is but there is some combat going on there now we defeated them but they survived so I'm guessing we now have to chase him down and it looks like he's trying to beach himself Ah, he's just docked. Okay. He's just docked in the Portuguese port. What have we got over here? Transports and... Frigate, second rate, first rate, so another combat squadron. Right. The fort is built in such a way that makes it impossible to assault without having the province under blockade. So we need to go blockade the port, it seems. Let's try and get my navies combined. Right. Assault. Not sure. I think it was a thousand guns for every level of fort. Now I'm assuming that's a fort level three, and we have three thousand guns, so we should be getting a breach. The fortress has sustained light damage. The garrison lacks supplies. There we go. So we're slowly damaging, damaging, damaging the fortress. Let's go save that navy. It just ran into um. Oh no, troop transport squadrons. Okay, no, let's not go save that navy. It should deal fine. There goes the uh, Russian troop transport morale. One lost. Where are they going to go? Try and head back and hit them. Oh, we can get them again. That just seems cruel, but you know. Russian troop transport. Oh, he's got away. Try again. He still got away. Light infantry brigade constructed. Come join the siege boys. Now, what's Britain up to on the northern coast? France is marching armies into my territory for some reason.
Victory again. Sailor one. Don't really know what's going on here. How this transport keeps surviving. It keeps getting away. Oh, that's not good. That's ship to the line. You come over and give them a hand. They're going to need it. Oh, here we go. We've got a proper battle on our hands here. Reinforcements just arrived. We turning the tide? Not quite. Their morale is going down quicker than ours, but it's going to be a race to the finish. Nope, it's like we got them. Oh, they just rolled a six, though. Go on, get out of here. I'll go off and die. Okay, so they got destroyed. They lost two for our loss of one. Let's merge them up. Okay, let's go chase them down, shall we? Let's go dock and uh, actually, no. Ooh. Yeah, okay, we'll stay there. The British Navy's just appeared. Okay, where's repairs? Oh, okay, it's just a replacements thing. So they should repair of their own accord. Just whilst they're sat in the dock. Yep, there we go, it's going up. And that's a lot of uh, British Navy power that has magically appeared down here. All of a sudden. I did wonder why they were such a large naval power rating in this game if I hadn't seen any of their ships. But uh, it seems they've just sent them down to say hi. Piedmont have honoured their military alliance with Russia and gone to war as well. Just check they're not dropping troops off anywhere else in the country. What we got? You can acquire more ideas. So this is the idea point system. When you get 200, you can pick something. So we've got land movement, shock, Spanish ideas. What Spanish ideas? We've got Spanish guerrillas. Reinforce speed. Basically seems to be bonuses to your guerrillas and militia units. That's Spanish ideas. Navy sail speed, march to the sound of the guns, or march towards nearby battles, I think that is. Economic ideas, artillery, shock, command. Let's go with the, uh, the infantry one, the land movement. So I can now set units to um, attack from neighbouring provinces if uh, there's a battle going on next door, basically. You lot repaired yet? So how's everyone in chat so far then? Seems most of them are talking about applying to join the 77Y. I 
How long will I be playing this? I'm going to play this until I at least finish this siege and then I may move on to something else. War Thunder is looking promising, but um, we will see. Okay, let's beat down that British ship. Thank you. They lost. Alright, let's detach you. Um... Create new unit. There we go. Okay, you go into there and repair. Okay, fortresses sustain light damage. Oh, what's going on here? Did Portugal just join the war? Countries at war. Portugal. Right. Let's gather those ones. Head down to Badahoff, although we'll meet up beforehand. Let's send those guys down to Ciudad Rodrigo. I'm going to chuck them in that way as well. Probably not the best bet to be pulling troops from every direction, but we're not going for a, uh, a proper game. We're just messing around. So why the hell not? Sicily have come to join the war. Hmm. I could try and assault. I've got a lot of troops, but... Next event in one day. I might as well wait and see what happens in the one day. Ah, we go into a naval battle, it seems. Get out there and help them. Coronation of Napoleon as King of Italy. Napoleon Bonaparte became King of Italy. Now, I saw something. Decisions. No, we don't have anything that we can click for that. Spain, uh, sorry, France get all sorts of interesting decisions like making the Kingdom of Italy and... Okay, people are asking me what I rate this game out of 10, given that I've been playing it an hour and, you know, it's a paradox game. These things take ages to get into. Um, I would say it's going to be one that takes a lot of uh, effort and I definitely think it would be much better in multiplayer. If the person playing Great Britain you know, wasn't just a dumb AI they might get a bit upset that I was dumping quite so many troops on there and decide to come say hi to my north coast um, and then give me some abuse in chat or over TeamSpeak and, but then France could go oh okay well if you're going to do that I'm going to do this and go dump on somebody else it's, you know, it's much more fun in multiplayer um, I, you can probably expect to see a multiplayer game from this M7Y. I'm sure I can get seven other people that have it together 
uh, for a couple of evenings to uh, beat the crap out of each other in as many ways as possible. And uh, if you've ever heard any of them in TeamSpeak when it's not an event and they're told to be quiet, uh, they will most definitely demonstrate abusing people particularly well. So the Netherlands have sent an army down here to help me apparently. It's marching off this way to try and fight the uh, Portuguese. Okay, the Portuguese lost a ship. We didn't lose anything. That went well for me. How is this doing? Okay, we now have our independence guaranteed by France. Here comes Britain. Sir Lord Duckworth, I think that was. Oh, I think he just sunk one of my ships of the line. His Mars squadron should be going down soon, though. If we can stop ourselves running away. No, we just lost another one. It's not going well. I think our navy just got slaughtered. Yep. We lost four ships of the line for his one. That would be why his maneuver is five, his offense and defense are four. Ours are three, two, and two. He just has a much better admiral. Uh, yes, this will be going on YouTube. Um, it will be going up possibly tomorrow. As uh, unfortunately the Napoleonic Wars line battle didn't occur on Sunday. Um, the TeamSpeak server went down and just the organisation of it didn't happen. So uh, that was that. Right, let's merge these. Who's our best general? Oh no, he was better. There we go. Let's have a look at their makeup. Cannon, cannon, cannon. Ooh, lots of cannon on that side. What we got? They all got cavalry? No, the right doesn't have cavalry, so let's give the right some cavalry. Ooh, there's a guard infantry group in there. Guard brigade. Very nice. Come say hi to the Portuguese, will you? Okay. Now we can't assault because we don't have a blockade. Oh, I should have done it while I did. Just to see what happened. Never mind. We can build some more ships. Ooh, that's a long build time, but then I guess the building a first-rate ship is going to take a while. We're not going to see that long, so I won't worry about it. So we can't assault Gibraltar because it's an island fortress and you need to have them blockaded to do so. Ah, the ba Battle of Badajoz. Spain versus Portugal. So let's see what happened. With artillery supporting them, they sought to disorder the enemy infantry, sparing no one with accurate musketry. Spanish left flank prepared an assault. Okay, let's see what's this one. The smoke cleared as the bombardment slackened off and whatever that name is. 
Watch the skirmishes steadily withdraw, their ammunition depleted. Now it's time to send in the infantry. The aide ran off spreading the orders, and the infantry assaulted. So you get a nice little story after every battle, which is a bit more than you get from Crusader Kings, which is just like, yeah, people ran in, they uh, they, they kind of slashed each other a bit, and uh, yeah, lots of people died. I mean, you still have to imagine stuff, it's not quite Total War, but it, it has things that Total War doesn't. A blend of the two would be lovely, but it would take forever to play. I mean, how many battles have we had so far? Times that by a half hour battle scene. Then multiply that up by several evenings worth of battles across the entire map for everyone playing. Wow, that would take a while. Okay, so we lost 2,000, they lost 8,000. That's all good. Let's, uh, let's go chase him down, shall we? Where's he gone? Is he hiding? Heathen! Where's he gone? Oh, he's down here, that's why. He's running away. Is he running away straight towards the Dutch army? He's... Yes. He's going to walk straight into the Netherlands army, which will hopefully beat the crap out of him just before I come up from behind and finish him off. Go on, get him. Get him. Right, well, we can assault. You have a fair chance of winning. I'm out of supply, so I don't really want to sit around for too long. Let's wait for them to move out and see if that number there drops. And it does. So no longer are there 13,000 troops in there, there are 2,000. So let's assault this. So all three flanks are attacking. It's going to be heavy casualties because it's assaulting a fully armed fortress. And there we have it. Harsh disciplinarian, entrencher. How can I have entrencher when I was attacking? Go figure that one. Now, is Elvas a victory place? Let's see. Elvas, yes. Elvas was the territory I had to capture. What else do Portugal own that I need? Where's their little symbol? Nowhere. Intriguing. And I do need Porto and Lisboa though. Where is Porto? Porto is up there. On to Lisboa. Johnny, we're coming for you. And that's a big French army coming this way as well. What's France up to, even? Ooh, 87,000 troops. I expected to see them beating the crap out of people up here, but not really. They formed Italy down there.
Okay, they're currently attacking the um, Dutch people that were sieging Lisboa. We're going to go in and help them there. That's not going to go well for them. We have a lot of men we've just brought to bear on their face. Okay, now that's a name that I'm not even going to try and pronounce. I'm guessing he is the Dutch general and not actually my army. Yeah, see, down there. Remind me never to play as the Netherlands. I'm not what? I'm not leading the siege. Okay. Because uh, they got there first. Alright. Merge you lot. Give you some generals. Head to Porto. I really need some naval power. Oh, were they fighting that? Really? We just won the Battle of Lisboa? Okay, let's have a bit of diplomacy with uh, Portugal at the moment and see if we can do something. Portugal. Ah. No, I can't do anything because it's not my war technically. It's Britain versus France and this lot have just joined in and is along with me. So um, France has to negotiate on my behalf it seems. Who gets the land after the war? I think it's up to the French to decide who it should, you know, who should get what. They, I think they set the peace terms and it's up to them to dish out who gets what. I, I don't particularly know to be perfectly honest. Seems it's something to consider when going to war as a coalition. You don't have much choice unless you're the coalition leader. Right, we're outside Cape Trafalgar with another one of our fleets. How is this fleet? They're fully repaired. Go get him. Go join in. Come on, we had six fleets in there. How can we not be beating the British? Oh yeah, we got the crappy admiral. I just remembered. It looks like we got him. Let's merge them together. Okay, now we can do an assault now. I'm going to try it because I'm fed up of sitting around. Go.
He's broken my center, but then we got him. Aggressively probing, counterattack. Cool. So we now own Gibraltar, I believe. And that's a rather big American squadron, consisting of five ships of the line. Run the hell away! Oh, he's going to get here first. Oh, I'm buggered. Bye, Admiral. Okay, yeah, retreat back to port, please. Okay, so we now own Gibraltar. Yes, good. Okay, can we do talk to Great Britain at all? Sue for peace. What's the war score? War is done decided unless your enemy is eager to fight on, he would likely to accept a white peace. I'm going to demand tribute. Gibraltar and Elvas. Gibraltar. What's this? Ah, they would not accept this offer. The war score is zero. Okay. So apparently we need to beat them up a whole lot more for them to even consider anything like that. But anyway, I think that's uh, enough for uh, a demonstration, possibly. I think people have understood what's going on for the most part now. So we will uh, end the part of the stream that's focused on this game, and I'm going to move on to something else. So, for anyone who's only here to see this, uh, that's all you're going to get from Arch of the Eagles from me for today, I'm afraid. You may want to go and find somebody else, as I'm sure there's plenty of people streaming. But, uh, I'm going to be moving on to War Thunder, so anyone from the 77Y who wants to come join, I'm going to be doing first come first serve on the channel that I go and jump into.